the story then is the story of Hades Town is actually two stories. It's um, Hades and his wife Persephone and their ongoing troubles of their marriage. And it's also the story of Eurydice and Orpheus. Orpheus. Now, this is a very, very, very popular myth. And it was um, actually Orpheus was part, had a cult following, very similar to Dionysus. I'll talk about that in just a minute. But the, the story of Hades Town is like, it really does, it takes the story of Hades and Persephone and it puts it into a uh, New Orleans jazz musical kind of context with this sort of dive bar background backdrop. And here you have, um, besides Hades and Persephone, here's Persephone here. When she returns to the above the ground, uh, she's carrying this basket of flowers, a suitcase full of summer, they call it. And this right here is our messenger god. Who was that? That's Hermes. That's right. And so he's the one who um, provides that information. These three women here are the three fates, or three of the muses, depending on the mythology. But this story then is, is about Hades, ruler of the underworld, and he kidnaps the goddess Persephone, and she represents nature and renewal, right? So she's spending part of her time in the underworld and part of her time um, in the upper world, right? And so there's one song called Living It Up on Top. And Hermes sings about the road to hell and how there's a railroad line. Turns out the song, this story becomes very metaphorical because the road to hell leads to basically hell is a factory floor where people are workers who are made to struggle and work horrible hours and horrible conditions for their entire lives. Sound familiar? So maybe one of the first themes that we can look at in this story is um, it has to do with labor and work and the wage. Now, um, it also has to do with, um, yeah, maybe uh, labor organizing, I don't know. Um, and one of the two, other two characters, so Orpheus and Eurydice, is the other story that's the other big component in this play. Um, let's see. Here's Hermes. This is the front of the stage. Here's Persephone and Hades here. The band is actually on either side of the stage. Here's Hermes. And now we have Eurydice. And she is someone who's a hungry young girl. She's hungry all the time. And she's going to meet and fall in love with Orpheus. But even though he is the love of her life and she wants to spend her life with him, she's going to choose because she's so hungry. She wants to go. Uh, she loses a bet and has to go work in hell. And the story is, is that Orpheus is going to come get her. This is Hades. And this is kind of cool. These pictures show a... Um, um, some of the classical take on, look, there's Hades abducting Persephone, and he's going to take her into the underworld. Um, this is the actor that plays him, somebody, Paige. Sorry, I, uh, I don't have all the, the names for the, the actors right now. And there he is again. So this is Orpheus. Orpheus is a lot like Apollo in that he has this magical ability with music, and he's able to tame the wild beasts and he's able to make the flowers grow when he plays his music. Uh, here's uh, Persephone. This is when she comes back. This is from um, uh, Leighton, the artist Leighton. And this is her, that's Hermes bringing Persephone back to her mother, bringing springtime again. You can look outside right now and see some of Persephone's work, right? Here's a picture of Orpheus. He's the singer and the perform um, musician who falls in love with Eurydice. And here he is here. And as the, the song in Hades Town goes, it's an old song, uh, but it's one we will sing and play again and again. They fall in love. I think Wedding Song or Wait For Me. Those are my favorite songs by them. And this is a picture of Eurydice. She's kind of a wanderer, kind of uh, someone who's always looking for a meal. She's always hungry. This is a classical take on her. It's kind of beautiful, huh? So essentially then, um, the story of Orpheus as this amazing 
um, amazing cult following, which is a, like Dionysus, is a, um, no, that's not, I'm sorry, is um, also a precursor to Jesus' descent into the underworld. So the cult of Orpheus, it had this enduring influence, right? It commemorated for a millennial, and, and you see it in Western art again and again and again. It's certainly part of the, the uh, persistence of myth, shows up a lot. Um, the story of Orpheus and Eurydice, Eurydice has been interpreted in many ways through different operas, um, through a Brazilian fl film called Black Orpheus, um, uh, there is something called a, the hip hop waltz of Eurydice by a, an Iranian born playwright. So it's been, um, and Salman Rushdie's The Ground Beneath Her Feet, Orpheus and Eurydice become rock stars. So it's had this influence, right? And so this playwright, Aeneas uh, Mitchell, is, uh, is no stranger to how powerful the story is and how it's held audiences' attentions for thousands of years. So basically, it's Orpheus enters Hades' realm to retrieve his adored wife, Eurydice, who had died of a poisonous snake bite. It's also a song, by the way, in the play. Uh, the mortal figure who combines elements of rational Apollo and ecstatic Dionysus. So he's bringing these two sides of the Greek mythos together, Apollo of the music and has um, all this structure about how he wants to change the world in this plan, very cerebral, intelligent. And then he's also Dionysus, which is the ecstasy and the love and the emotion of Dionysus and the journey into the dark like Dionysus also has that whole rebirth cycle, right? Like an agricultural god. Orpheus's music charms Hades' fiercest monsters, including Cerebrus and the Furies, who quietly let him pass. Singing of his love for Eurydice, Orpheus reduces Hades and Persephone to tears, winning the permission to reclaim his wife, provided he does not look at her or speak to her until after they have emerged into the world of the light. But this is a tragedy, fair warning. Orpheus's fatal error, error is inevitable as Adam's tasting of the forbidden fruit or Pandora's opening of the jar of woes. His loss of Eurydice is final, poignantly illustrated. Um, this is really, really the, the crunch of the, one of the biggest themes of the story, which is love, and death, like Romeo and Juliet, remember? And this is how the Greeks are recognizing love has so much power, but it cannot bring, for mortals, it cannot bring the dead back to the living. So there, this is like a realistic assessment between them. Okay, so I was using this book, this book that I love so much. Um, so now we've talked about two themes, the laws of love and death, labor, organizing labor and work, um, and um, possibly also solidarity, right? Okay. So now let's get into some of the music of Hades Town. Um, and it's, it's not just the retelling of like, you know, hell is a factory on the factory floor. It's also the story of climate change, climate change. So here, Persephone was part of the first winter. Well, there's part of one song where, like, um, in this time of, the coldest time of year, why is it so hot down here? And so it ain't right and it ain't natural, right? Colder, uh, like, than a crucible. And then later on, she's like, in this time of year, why is it so bright down here? Brighter than a carnival. It ain't right and it ain't natural. Well, Hades, throughout his... Um, Throughout his, the, the story, we find out that he's been missing his lover so much that he's stayed really busy. And he's been unearthing all the fossil fuels from the ground to build a wall. Yeah, this is still 2006, to build a wall. He's like, lover, you were gone so long. Lover, I was lonesome. Um, so he's been building this wall and using all of these workers, these enforced indentured servants to, uh, that, and your DC becomes one to have um, releasing all of the fossil fuels into the world, into the environment, 
right? Because that's what's causing climate change. It's all of the, the coal and the oil and the gas. It gets, it's trapping heat in our atmosphere. That's what causes climate change. I have a couple of lectures in my, for my other class on climate change if you wanted to hear a little bit more about that. So this, this is actually dealing with the issue of climate change in this story. Um, let's see. So there's a story of the, that shows you the part of the scene where um, Orpheus is looking for um, his love. She's right there. And he actually takes the, um, he doesn't take the, the road to hell the way other people have because they're dead. He's part of the living, finding his way to Eurydice. But it, there's a song called Any Way the Wind Blows and the Fates Sing. Weather ain't the way it was before. Ain't no spring or fall at all anymore. It's either blazing hot or freezing cold any way the wind blows. There ain't a thing that you can do when the weather takes a turn on you, except for hurry up and hit the road any way the wind blows. So the um, Aeneas, this playwright, was profoundly impacted by major climate change events that are going on today and today. And I want us, I want you to know that I have a message of hope for you um, that we can change things. You all are about to inherit this crazy, crazy world. I want you to think about how Aeneas took an ancient story and put some very modern takes like climate change, labor organizing, um, love and death and all of these things that still make sense to us today. And finally, The Wall, a lot of people and I watched because I got to see the show last year. I watched in the audience when this whole idea about the wall and building the wall, children, why do we build the wall? We build the wall to keep us free. That's why we build the wall. We build the wall. We build the wall. We keep, we build the wall to keep us free, to keep us free from the enemy. Uh, that's why we build the wall. And so he, um, he's, uh, Hades is instructing his children to build a wall. All of these things are crazy things that are going on right now, but the wall then becomes uh, an archetype, right? Because she wrote it in 2006, but everybody thought this had to do with the Trump era and Trump wanting to build the wall, build the wall. So the wall means something different to everyone in different time periods. That's what archetypes and what myth can do. Can do. Um, I think... I want you to, um, to see, um, let's see. So I guess the other part of this is um, in the Orpheus and Eurydice tragedy, uh, the lyre, the, the lyre player Orpheus has the power to animate the flowers in the rivers, marries the beautiful wood nymph Eurydice who suddenly dies. When she travels to the underworld, Orpheus tries to retrieve her but encounters its overseer Hades. Hades allows the lovers to leave, as I mentioned before, but only if Orpheus leads Eurydice up to the world without looking back with her. And he does, and she dies again. This was something that was like several thousands of years old. I don't think I'm really giving you a spoiler. So Aeneas Mitchell, the show's creator, she shepherded the story that she wrote all the way from a community center in Vermont in 2006 to Broadway this year. And um, uh, as we see then in her story, the, the people on top are still on the road to hell waiting for a train, either to take them there or bring a change in the weather. Haney's wife, Persephone, is the daughter of Zeus and Demeter, spends half her time um, with him and half in the year of the living. Um, it evokes, but this story continues to evoke today's news because Hades is in the musical. He's this suit wearing boss. He's a slick con man who promises wealth, but suckers in the hungry, poor Eurydice to a life of to toil in the factory pit in a chilling scene in the first act reminiscent of 1984. He describes the wall his children are building and it's never quite clear whether the wall is real or a metaphor, but it's made obvious in Fox News style doublespeak that they build the wall to keep out the enemy. They want what we have. So this, this might be political, but it's not merely anti-Trump. It's something much bigger than that. There, it's, it's basically, it's this communality and Orpheus seems to have 
the answers, not just to bring music to calm the savage beasts, but also he, in his words, he says, if no one takes too much, there will always be enough. And he finishes his song and he organizes the workers in the underworld with it. When he miraculously makes his way to Hades without taking the aforementioned train, he breaks the workers from their deadness by prompting them to question Hades' authority. authorities. Is it true what Hades is saying? Is it true what they say? Um, so it becomes kind of a collective bargaining. It becomes Orpheus as the leader of a labor union, like organizing them to say, stick together. This is solidarity. We, we stick together. We can overcome people like Hades. So this story, every single one of these songs has got a lot of meat to it. There are a lot of themes in Hades Town, and I really hope you get a chance to see it. I really want you to uh, read the whole play if you can and go listen to the music. It's, it's really rich. Here's some of the, um, some of the articles I was, um, I was using um, in order to discuss Hades Town. Um, I think, uh, let's see, I guess just one more thing I want to leave you on with, leave you with, um, is, oh yeah, so, you know, why do we have myth today? Why is there this persistence? You know, other than this decline between the, the fall of Rome and the late Middle Ages, classical mythology has endured and endured and endured and um, throughout periods of history. Basically, when Rome finally fell, fell to Constant, Constantinople, to the Ottoman Turks, all of the Greek scholars came to the West and they brought the manuscripts of these playwrights with them. And so they, um, and they found like this, this amazing rebirth. I mean, why do you think we see Renaissance paintings of Botticelli's Venus or all of these, like, these were all periods in the Renaissance and the early modern era of these amazing stories, amazing stories, these Greek myths that these artists post Middle Ages wanted to keep alive. And it's because of this resurgence of these Greek st scholars that came to Italy, that came to Europe, that kept these stories alive. So that's, that's one reason why we have, um, this ability to um, why we the, these myths are enduring, um, not just because of the physicality of the scholars bringing them to the West, but I just want to read this one other little piece for you today. In all the varied forms in which classical myths have been passed on to us through the millennia, they have retained their power to compel our attention and to reveal to us in a myriad of ways their complex capacity for conveying mean, meaning. They will undoubtedly continue to move us for a long time to come, expressing both the continue, um, continuity of the human spirit and its infinite variety in as yet unimagined ways. I want you to imagine those ways, my friends. I want, um, oh, I want you to think about how issues of our day are so relevant to us. I want you to write down what's going on in a journal. I want you to commit to some kind of practice because you are inheriting this world. You, 20 years from now, will be the one who said, I lived through this pandemic. I lived through this to tell the tale. And you are the, going to be what history will remember. So think about how this little writer named Aeneas Mitchell from Vermont in a community, community center in 2006 went on to create with the right people and the right help and the right story, an incredible 14 time Tony award winning Broadway musical from nothing obscurity to this huge deal because it resonates so much with people, with us, right? The audience, as well as people who love stories. So take a few moments this won't be on any exam. This is for you to, to write down what you're going through right now. What has an impact on you right now? Because um, that's, that's what Hades Town is all about. And you are living history right now. Um, take a few minutes, each day if you can, to write down. Because you're not alone and other people are feeling this too. Anyway, um, do come see me uh, next semester if you get a chance.
it's been an honor working with you and I really love, love, love this class and I've loved everything that you guys have sent in. Good job. I hope we meet again soon.